Well, can they finish off her Premiership? Do they want to finish off her Premiership? What is likely to happen here now in Westminster? David Davis, former Brexit Secretary himself, of course, <laughs> is with me. What do you make of it all? Well, I mean, no progress whatsoever, really. I mean, we are, we're now in the position, uh, astonishingly, of uh, uh, going into six months in which we'll have a European election, uh, which will cost, I guess, £100 million pounds to, to have. Uh, and if we go to this timetable, those MEPs who are elected in that election will sit for about three or four weeks uh, uh, at the end of summer, and, and then we'll be back in the same place in October. So it's really, really difficult to, to see how this has been progress at all. She might get a deal before May. Well, I don't think so. I mean, w the... the the, 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 she's put to the House of Commons now three times the the uh, so-called meaningful vote on, on her deal. I mean, I voted for it twice, even though I don't like the deal, it, just to, to, to bring the process to an end so we can get on with the next step. Um, but unless she comes back with, unless the Prime Minister comes back with something different to put to the House, it's difficult to see how she's going to get the DUP to vote for for the deal or indeed uh, uh, some, some of the Conservative Party to vote for it too. Most of the Conservative Party, even those who vote for it, voted for it, don't like it. Uh, and I don't actually foresee uh, the talks of the Labour Party leading to an outcome. Um, the, the Labour Party's... It's possible, hold... though. It's possible, it's possible. But the, the, uh, the only way I can see that happening is if the Prime Minister agrees to a customs union, membership of the customs union, and, uh, 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 or, or something like what Ken Clark was talking about the earlier. common market yeah, is the way yeah, I, that, I, Yes, I have to say Ken was leading you up the garden <laughs> path there, to be frank. <laughs> In his sense. in his traditional way, he was he was wrapping it up in. Uh, Except that yeah. there was logic in what he said. We would not <clears throat> any longer. We might be in the common market. That is to say, we'd be in the economic bit of it, but we would not be in the, the political bit. Of well, it. Uh, that's that's not true. I'm afraid. I mean, the 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 simple truth is, it's no longer the, when the common market was fine. I mean, Britain was very happy with. Yeah, the but then market. it became the European Union, which is a very different animal and, indeed and than it, what and, Ken Clark. Got, was saying and is it got, we wouldn't be and in it got, the European Union. And it got the single market. And with a point about this, one of the points about the single market, I mean, there are several points about it, but one of them uh, is that it dictates what laws we apply to our own industry. So, so we are in a polit political thing just without a voice. Similarly, also, it requires us to, to maintain free movement of people, which I don't think, you know, in other words, Europe contro controls our immigration policy. Uh, it also controls our trade policy. So it's actually, it's, it's a bit of a fiction to say that we are, we are are in uh, a common market, we wouldn't be anything like it. Would, this would be this would be something which controlled many aspects of our uh, national policy, and that's what the British people voted. In other words, you don't want that deal. You don't want the, the sort of deal that we can't renegotiate the withdrawal agreement. That is that, but the sort of possibility of any the the, the political declaration might change in the direction that somebody like Ken Clark would find acceptable, you would not find it acceptable. No, and indeed neither would the House of Commons. I mean, they, we've Under had... any circumstances. We've, we've had all... No, we've, we've had all of these indicative votes, so-called, uh, 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 and actually the House of Commons didn't decide on any of them. Not, not what, so all this talk about. But they're under the cosh now in a way they weren't then. Uh, well, no, they've been under the cosh. Well, <laughs> uh, come on. I mean, we, we, uh, well, for about 15 uh, years, I know. Yeah, 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 but, but, uh, but like no, no, but I mean, in more, in more, in more specific terms, I mean, uh, these votes were held in with a prospect of no deal looming, you know, which, which is the biggest. I mean, uh, the House doesn't like no deal. I mean, I, I think the House is. is panicky in, uh, about No Deal in, in, unnecessarily, but but the truth is it doesn't like No Deal. It really sees it as a bad thing. And so it was under the cosh, and it didn't vote for anything. So it seems to me that, that the the one thing the House of Commons has voted for is the so-called Brady Compromise or the Malt House Compromise. What that means, basically, is the deal that the Prime Minister has put forward, but with some modifications so that we don't have Northern Ireland, as it were, pushed out of the United Kingdom or separated from the rest of the United Kingdom. That's the one thing the House has voted for, given a proper majority to, and that's the one thing we haven't put to Brussels. I don't quite know why the Prime Minister never put it to Brussels. Because Brussels will not envisage 
any change to the withdrawal agreement. Well, I don't, you see, this is what's interesting. Now, there couldn't be more clear than that. No, 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 no. Now, it's quite interesting because the, the, the battle last night, the reason it went on till two in the morning, there was, there was quite a, an unusual battle between France and Germany. Hmm. Uh, France holding a hard line on everything. Uh, Germany saying, no, we've got to find a deal. Now, on Friday of last week, the BBC actually interviewed uh, uh, AKK. I, I can't remember. The full German name is, is beyond me. But The woman who's likely to be Charles. The lady, who, the lady who's the successor yeah. to, to Angela Merkel and is incredibly close to Angela Merkel. Uh, and what she said in terms is, well, if we need to give the Brits five days of intensive negotiation on Northern Ireland, then let's do that. Well, they, except that the European Union themselves last night issued a statement well, well, saying there will be no further the well, negotiation well, on the it, withdrawal it, agreement, it, full stop. Well, you, how are we, look, Couldn't they, be more clear. They, 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 they're always very stark about their statements. And, and, and what but we, they have been consistent. No, on this no, no, no. One of, one of the... One of the and and the, this, is the, this is where I differ. I mean, one of the points about uh, the European Union, they always say starkly, this is what we're going to do, and we're not going to move, and then they do. I mean, if, if you want a, a really good example of this, I mean, you've had Yanis Varoufakis on this programme. Go look at what happened with Greece. We're not going to do this, we're not going to do this. Oh, yes, we are. Um, and, and that's what happens. You must mustn't take their statements as anything more than negotiating. Nor can you rely on them giving way at no, this stage. No, of course you can't. Of course you can't. But uh, but we haven't tried. This is this is the problem. We oh, really? Have, no, no. On, on this on this single issue, since Malthouse went through a, a, month, or so, a month or so ago, uh, it was, as I say, the one thing that got a majority. This, this idea of going to... Uh, look at uh, to going to the, the the sort of the Northern Ireland part of the backstop agreement and saying right, can we find a better way around it? Can we find a way of having an invisible board right, without but, that? But let us assume that that is not going to happen for partly for the reasons that you just. Well, added. you're probably right with with as it stands. Right. Yeah, yeah. Therefore, it sounds to me you you, you are a no dealer. Basically, you are let us leave without an agreement. Well, I'm I'm a, I'm a default no dealer. A default no dealer. Uh, if I you mean, like. look, but I've I've always said, I mean, for years, for two years, that you know, no deal's not perfect. Uh, it will have turbulence in the short term. There's no doubt about that. But actually, it's all perfectly manageable. Uh, we've done huge amounts of work. Every every single Dexu minister, and there've been a number of them now. Uh, you know, I'm not just talking about the, the the Secretary of State, the the the, the ministers who actually ran the No Deal preparation. All of them, including Chris Eaton Harris last week, have all said, "No deal is manageable." No deal, you know, no deal can be done. They're, they're, they're all default no dealers. And all the experts, people like the chair of the uh, Bank of England governor, say it will come at a cost. Well, I mean, the Bank of England has got this thing wrong many, many times. I mean, uh, well, their, their forecast. So have Dexu ministers. Yeah, so, the, so they have. So they have. But what they, actually, the Dexu ministers' views have not been tested. Uh, have not been tested. Uh, the, but, the, but the Bank of England's forecasts have been wrong every time, as indeed have the Treasury. Right. But yeah. if we're heading in that direction, mm. that would be the end of Theresa. May, wouldn't it? Quite clearly. Well, uh, uh, Theresa has herself now said, I mean, uh, she, she said that uh, when she gets a deal through, she will then go. That's what she said. In fact, uh, she, I think... Put the, uh, and if she cannot get I think, a deal I think through, number then 10, she is going to have well, to Well, let me just finish the point, John. I mean, um, she said then, and number 10, I think, actually put the date of May the 22nd on it. When Prime Ministers put a date on their own departure... That tends to become a self-fulfilling prophecy, and and I think uh, what is likely to happen is the pressure for her to go will go up. I'm not, I'm not, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to have the, the no confidence vote, and I didn't vote against her in it. Uh, but uh, but the pressure on her to go will increase dramatically, I suspect now. I mean, whether it'll come to anything, who knows? Because because the rules are the rules. All right. So your best bet as to what will happen over the next, oh, I don't know. Let's say until between now and October. Well, I say there'll be pressure on her to go. If she does go, there'll be a new leader, and then I think there'll be a reset in the uh, in the negotiation. Any new leader will go over there and say, "Look, this has not worked. We want to start uh, from scratch on, on, particularly on the sort of the uh, the, the Northern Ireland issues." Uh, and that's what happened there. She Otherwise, could stay for the conference. She could I, not stand on that stage as leader of the well, look, I, I'm, party. I'm, 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 I'm not the, I'm not an advocate of this. I'm just saying to you what what my well. What's your view? What, could what, could she be standing on that stage? Can't remember where the conference is taking place this year. But yeah. could, she, could she stand on that stage, Tory Party conference, as your leader? Well, I think it's going to be difficult because because uh, by that time we will have had uh, a European elections, which will become a, a plebiscite really on uh, on on Brexit, and I suspect you'll see a very successful uh, rise of a, a sort of Brexit. 
Conservative movement, the Nigel Farage thing and so on. Uh, so that would be quite difficult. I think it would be very difficult for her. So the pressure on her will grow. Uh, what the outcome is, I can't, you know, you can, you can make a forecast as well as I can. Um, but but that's, that's going to be quite difficult. You uh, were the first Brexit secretary. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you want to happen in the in in the real world and put aside the but well you can't put aside the political wheel of dealing yeah. of course it's yes. an essential part of it but when in in the interest of this nation what do you think should happen over the next couple of months well the the, the ideal is what i've already said i mean <clears throat> there's no ideal starting where we are the uh, the the best outcome one could practically hope for is a return to uh, uh, an alternative to the backstop uh, which allows us to have an invisible border in Northern Ireland. It's very interesting. One of the things that has changed in the last few weeks has been when Europe has been countenancing no deal, it has said, actually, even in no deal, we'll have no border in Northern Ireland. Mr Varadkar has said that, one of the, one of the sharpest arguers on this point. Uh, the Juncker has said it. I think Barnier has said it. If they can have no border in Northern Ireland in a no-deal circumstance, the only way they can do it is using exactly the same approach that we've argued for in the so-called Malthouse Compromise, the alternative arrangements. In other words, everybody really knows that there is a technical answer for Northern Ireland. That's where we should be looking. If we do that, we get that sorted out, we get out of the union and we get on to the next stage of negotiation. And then I'll be arguing again for Canada plus, 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 as I have done for the last year or two. And we don't have time for that now. Unfortunately. Actually not today. <laughs> David Davis, thank you very much. My pleasure. 29 minutes past eight.